What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Evan. Welcome to the Cartoon Block. Today, I'm going to show you my process for sketching Iron Man. Let's get started. So starting out, I like to go ahead and begin with sketching Iron Man's head. And I always start light, kind of like an egg shape. And we're going to have this foreshortened pose. It's extreme foreshortening. Foreshortening is when you have the illusion of something's coming towards the camera or towards the viewer in a shortened pose. So we're going to have his hand, his repulsor blast aimed at the audience. And I like to use my toys. Um, a lot of us artists and geeks and nerds have toys and we really don't use them to their maximum potential. I highly recommend using your toys to get inspiration and to come up with your poses and things like that. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, toys are kind of like having your own model on demand. So <laughs> you can use your toys to just get the details in like certain costumes of your characters that you're trying to draw. You can use them for like shadow reference to see how light hits, you know, their faces or their bodies and then see where the shadow is cast at. You can use toys for several different, you know, reasons, you know, when you're drawing your characters. And like I said, for here I'm using this Iron Man. It's a Marvel uh, Diamond Select figure. It's like Marvel's seven inch uh, toy line. And a lot of those, the, the, their models, uh, the, the rather the molds of them and the sculpts have really good details in the design. I'm really impressed with what Marvel does for them considering their price range. Um, I think at the time when I bought this toy it might have been about 15 or 20 dollars I believe and it has a lot of great you know uh, details in Iron Man's costume. So I had to use you know my toys as reference to get like certain poses that I'm trying to that's very hard to obtain and you can use it a lot. Uh, I have other figures like Captain America, uh, I have a Hulk figure, I have a Hulk statue that I, that I really want to draw. I just don't have room to put him on my desk because of all my art supplies and things like that. But I want him closer to me on my desk but I really would like to put him out because uh, he's a really cool figure and that's why I bought him. Um, but also I have Hawkeye and I have a Thor figure as well but the Marvel Diamond Select Thor figure I'm not crazy about but I do have an, another Thor figure that has an awesome face sculpt so a lot of those you know sculptors and toy designers they're artists as well they know how to draw because they have to draw the figure before they can start sculpting the the mold of the, the figure so here we're kind of like reverse engineering the actual toy so going back to what it originally was but as you can see um, I'm not doing everything exactly like the toy is here I'm kind of just drawing Iron Man just however I can and uh, giving him a little bit of style and kind of like making his face or his helmet a little skinnier than it normally would be and but the toys are great because you don't have to make up the details you can just look at the toy and then just do like a rough uh, or less detailed version of the figure because these toys have a lot of like you know cuts and and uh, nooks and crannies and corners I'm not going to be drawing all that detail on Tony Stark so we're, we're gonna skip all that but I do have the basic pose down here which I sketched out originally in the gesture drawing and now that we have the head we can now start moving on to his shoulder area and like I said it's going to be a foreshortened pose so it's going to come out at us so you would draw less of his arms which is easier to draw than drawing the whole arm because he has all this bulkiness and all of this you know uh, armor plating on him you basically can just draw two circles one for his shoulder pad and then one overlapping that which will represent his forearm. You don't even see his bicep muscle or bicep section of his arm because that area is hidden away. 
and that's why foreshortened arms, especially guys like Stark who wears armor or if you're drawing like a medieval knight or something like that you can get away with drawing a lot less so take my word for it it's easier to draw four shortened arms than it is to draw whole entire arms or arms that you can see the full length of now moving on to his hands I know normally he has the uh, rounded metal pleated fingers so we're gonna change this up a little bit and just kind of draw him with his like thumbs and fingers being more squared off or something like that I'm gonna put a slight roundness to them and quickly sketch in his repulsor so for his hands the toy doesn't have a good representation of how to draw his hands um, the way that I want to do them anyway so I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of look at my own hand in the process and that's my main model that I have so I'm using the toy in conjunction with my own hand and that gives me the drawing that I want and when you draw you have to go ahead and use multiple different types of reference out there uh, you can use Google images for certain things online you can use your your own body of course you can use family and friends take pictures of them they will think you're a little bit weird but you can definitely go ahead and ask them to pose for you but the purpose of using reference is to make sure that your drawing is based out of some form or at least is grounded in reality and when your drawing is grounded in reality uh, you can start from there that way when you start drawing and making up and tweaking and changing things in your artwork you won't be making things up from scratch and it's a lot easier to start with a reference so start drawing the reference and use the reference as a guide it's always a guide to start you out with so you don't have to come up with something entirely different on your own so now uh, we have moving on to his collar and his breastplate I kind of had his arc reactor, the circle in his chest, a little bit too high. So I'm going to move that down some more and erase his, his um, not really his collar, what do you call it? It's the thing that overlaps his, um, his shoulder. So almost like, like missiles come out of that shoulder um, armament. armament. That's what, you want, what I want to say. So as you can see when I'm sketching this, sometimes things don't always stay in their original place where I laid them at the beginning as you're drawing think of your drawing as like a, um, a statue or a mold you have to change things up on the fly things will not be the same always as you're you know working through the drawing at all you're going to be going ahead and like changing things up and kind of erasing this and adding to that and saying oh you know what that was a bad idea in the beginning so you have to go in and change that so you know what that didn't work out like I thought it would you have to go in and change it too many aspiring artists believe that artists have to draw everything um, perfect the first time and a lot of us think that a lot of pros do it that way they do not things do get changed all the time you never know what you'll come across now it's good to have some kind of vision to start out with in your mind but when you're drawing it and then you actually see it on paper you're like ooh that might need some tweaking the whole drawing isn't scrapped it isn't garbage but you can at least start you know um, molding it to where you want it to be as you can see here now I'm drawing like the back of Tony's breastplate and trying to make sure I have his rib cage area of his armor being like the proper form to where it wraps around the side of his body because it's almost like his real ribs it's kind of like you know modeled after the human rib cage where I have his ab muscles on, on, on the front and the side curved around but I also have that dip in the lower part of his rib cage right on the side of his rib cage and make sure I have that kind of like a uh, inverted uh, V in, in at, I guess below his um, arc reactor in the center of his chest 
So, but I also, I'm changing this up because I want to make sure that I give him that heroic pose. And you want that because it makes him look more super heroic. I want him to have a bigger chest, a thinner waist, and bulky shoulders. So, and it does take time to just sketch it out. And right here, I'm just being loose. Just being loose and there's no need to be trying to get in super detailed with it and that was the purpose of us doing like a gesture drawing in the beginning to kind of like get the rough shape of the figure now I can go in and start looking at certain details in his neck and then adding them on here so as you can see I kind of did like you know my own like sketch of him but using the toy for all the details and making sure that I am staying grounded which is what reference is for, making sure that I am staying grounded in his um, in, with, with his costume details, so I'm not just flat out making up a uh, brand new Iron Man. And I want to get his hands in here and trying to like get the segmented sections in their proper perspective wrapped around his fingers, and that could be kind of difficult. So I'm, I want his fingers to be bent as they're going like away from us, at least here, his uh, index finger. Yes, we kind of have that in there. And I'm gonna start using my HB pencil, drawing pencil, to kind of like darken in certain lines that I know that I wanna keep. And then, and then kind of just ignore the lines or erase the lines that I don't wanna keep. And I'm gonna put in some kind of gradient on his helmet on his faceplate rather so that gives it that you know uh, glare and shows that it does have some kind of shiny metallic texture to it it's kind of just drop in a diagonal gradient in the front of his uh, faceplate it usually works most of the time and uh, remember it's just the illusion of a shiny surface and metal and almost done with the side over here and now we can go ahead and start fleshing in some more, adding in some more shading over here on the side of his helmet. And we can kind of zoom out, take a look and see what looks right. And because I'm having the repulsor, the blast come from the middle of his hand, it will cast a brightness, or rather the brightness will be on the front of his fingers, but then there will be a dark shadow on the side. And as you can see, we, we didn't even have to really draw the pinky and the ring finger because those two are kind of being covered in the blast. So if you have a character who is blasting energy rays and stuff and it's covering up a part of their body, you don't even have to draw the details of that body part or the section of that body. And now I'm going to use my whiteout gel pen, test it out on some scrap paper here, and I'm going to put in some highlights so we can kind of like make bring his eyes out and make his eyes pop because we had so many rough pencil and dirty pencil construction lines over the whole thing now we can kind of like bring out his eyes he looks a little better and now i'm going to go back in and even contrast that with some ink lines and just go around his eyes and sometimes I do this for like the whole drawing, but mainly around the eyes because the eyes is, as they say, the window to the soul. So going to my Uniball Signal white gel pen, I'm going to put in maybe some little bit thicker white, you know, uh, sections and just highlight certain like rivets and divots and other details in this black section, in this shadow section. But I usually do that on the eyes because I want the eyes to pop. And that's where people's attention is drawn. It's to the eyes of whatever subject you have. doesn't matter the pose of whatever character you have. People are drawn to the eyes. Because we as human beings, when we engage with you know, people in our daily lives, we look in their eyes. And now I'm using my Presto Gel White Correction Pen, which I got from an office supply store. To put in more of the bigger white areas so his uh, arc reactor on his chest and put in some whites to kind of segment the, 
the metal plates on his abs. And notice I'm doing this in the black section, in the shadow section of his body because this is where the white pops out. And now I'm going to just quickly rough in a, some atmosphere in the back. And that's a, we're just about done with this here. That's Tony Stark as Iron Man. So, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. I'll check y'all later. Deuces! And if you're still having a hard time coming up with your own superhero body, then click the link below in the description and get my free superhero mini course. Get started right now. Don't wait.